Hi, my name is Joe Evans. I'm from Radiant Technologies. In this video, I'm going to execute piezoelectric measurements of a thin piezoelectric film that moves a few angstroms, and then a piezo MEMS type device that'll move more than two microns. For this purpose, I'm going to use the Radiance AFM reference. The uh, AFM reference is delivered with, and its mounting fixtures are, are delivered with every PNDS. And if you desire more, just contact Radiant Technologies or to uh, ask us more questions about the device. You will also find the uh, construction of the device and the other information about it on the data sheet on our website at www.ferrodevices.com. In front of you, you'll find a range, a typical setup for PNDS measurement. We have the PNDS on a vibration damping table. Uh, the e-box that controls the PNDS, a precision multiferroic, and my uh, laptop, which is running the uh, software for controlling the PNDS and the tester. It has two monitors on it. Almost invariably, you'll need those two monitors because you need three windows to properly operate the PNDS. One is vision, shown on my laptop uh, screen. The uh, graphical interface for controlling the PNDS on the right-hand side of the uh, second monitor and then the camera image, in which case you can see already the uh, sample mounted under the camera. The PNDS right now is mounted on a vibration dampening table. Uh, it's, it comes in two pieces, the damping table, a small table buried underneath here, which the PNDS sits on, and then a larger platform uh, that holds the camera. Now, both of these tables are, have these uh, cushioning legs which uh, dampen vibration quite a bit. And this camera is a mechanical oscillator because it's a heavy weight on top of a steel bar which acts as a mass and a spring. So it has a mechanical resonant frequency. It doesn't move very far, but we're trying to measure angstrom. So if it's attached to the PNDS, it adds to the ambient noise. By separating out the camera on a separate platform, we reduce the ambient noise level of the PNDS while it's operating. And I have already aligned the camera to the cantilever and the sample to the cantilever. I have calibrated the piezoelectric chuck and I have run a force distance calibration on the cantilever that I have in the cantilever holder. Uh, the procedures for doing this are in a separate uh, training video uh, from Radiant at our YouTube site. In this measurement, the first one I'm going to do is measure the thin film. Now, thin films only move a few angstroms, maybe 15, 20 angstroms at most. And that's a much smaller amount than the normal ambient low frequency noise from the environment. So to make that measurement, we want to make it very fast in the order of one kilohertz. We want to set the stage slow by setting um, very slow settings on the GPID feedback control of the PNDS. Run the measurement fast, in which case the cantilever will move very fast, showing up on the photo sensor and coming out of the Z error BNC on the e-box. The uh, stage will be too slow to uh, keep up with it, so it won't cancel any of those motions. Later, when I do the piezoelectric MEMS type displacement that's over two microns, I, do, I will want to actually to speed up the chuck, run the test very slow, so the chuck can cancel the motion of the cantilever. In that case, I'm going to move the BNC cable to Z drive so that I'm taking the, the actual voltage across the piezoelectric chuck to the sensor input of the tester. In that case, as the uh, sample surface moves, the chuck moves to cancel it, and we are capturing that motion with the tester during the hysteresis loop. Uh, however, the chuck is moving in the opposite direction to the sample surface, so for that case, we're going to use a minus sign on the scale factor. For the thin films on Z error, the motion of the cantilever matches the motion on the photosensor, so we use a positive sign on the scale factor to properly orient the butterfly loop. The AFM reference is on a T018 can without a lid. It comes delivered 
on already mounted in its um, PC board and the PC board has been screwed to the nylon collar. The nylon collar itself will slip over the brass fitting on the piezoelectric chuck. Uh, the screws can be removed to take the board off the nylon uh, collar to replace it with a separate board. To mount the device, I'm going to want to remove the uh, plastic tubing that we've placed over it to protect the bond wires on the TO18 header. In this case, I'm going to use um, needle nose pliers to gently pull it straight away from the TO18 to make sure I don't damage any of the uh, bond wires. You don't want to lose the plastic tubes. The nylon collar fits over the brass fitting. And you can see that I've already aligned the camera and that the image is clear. I want to rotate the sample until it's parallel with the camera frame, which has already been set parallel with the cantilever. And I tighten the thumb screw on the collar. It has uh, four wires coming from it. White is the actual header itself. By connecting it to the shields of the tester, we provide a bubble of, uh, of a ground shield around the die. Black is the bottom electrode. Orange is the top electrode for the thin film that's clamped. And gray is the top electrode for the membrane. And you can see the difference between the two capacitors. They're identical, with the exception that we use a DRE uh, process to mill out all of the silicon underneath this capacitor. So this membrane is only two microns thick, the same capacitor in both cases, but the stress causes, the intrinsic stress causes the uh, capacitor to bow out from the surface of the die. I'm now going to connect the uh, cables from the tester to the sample. I'm going to take the shield, which is the black uh, mini grabber, and attach it to the white lead, which now grounds the uh, header on which the die sits. And since this is the drive, I'm going to drive the top electrode, and I'm going to connect it to the orange lead, which now means I'm Drive, uh, driving the top electrode of the uh, clamped capacitor. My next stage is to take the return and also ground it to the uh, header and then connect the return lead, red mini grabber, to the top, the bottom electrode of the capacitor. Now both capacitors share a common bottom electrode, so all I have to do is move between the orange and the gray to switch between the two capacitors. Samples in place, the last alignment, loosening the thumb screw, aligning and tightening it up again. I have the um, light lever raised very high so I can actually take the cantilever, which I've previously mounted using um, techniques that are discussed in another training video on our website at YouTube. I'm going to slide it into place. I know I have plenty of clearance because the light lever has been raised. And so there's a significant distance between the cantilever and the surface of the sample. So I didn't break the cantilever inserting it. I can now lower the light lever using the uh, manually the knurled knob that's connected to the stepper motor that controls the position of the light lever. On this knurled knob, wrote Looking down on it, rotating clockwise is up, counterclockwise is down. Now, if you notice, I can raise the focus of the camera to see the cantilever is there in place, but I want to actually focus on the sample surface. I'm not going to lower the light lever until the cantilever is almost in focus. That puts it just above the surface of the sample. Now, I'm also going to watch the gap between the cantilever and the sample surface so I can move the uh, light lever quickly without worrying about jamming it into the surface. And then when I get it close, approximately an eighth of an inch, uh, a few millimeters, you'll see that the cantilever is now uh, 
almost in focus. It also has a um, shadow from the camera light, and the, clo uh, the closer the shadow is to the cantilever, the closer the cantilever is to the surface. I can lower the cantilever slowly now using the image from the camera, position the sample where I want underneath the cantilever where I want to make my measurement center of the, of the capacitor in this case. And I'm now ready to uh, turn on the laser, align the laser, and make my measurement. And move the mouse across the GUI to the pre-scan page and turn on the laser. Notice that the laser now is hitting the cantilever but bouncing through the cantilever to the sample surface. I'm also aligned at approximately one volt high on the photosensor and aligned left to right very closely. I can actually come over and make fine adjustments on the position of the laser spot on the photosensor. But the vertical position to start with is not really critical. Somewhere between 1.1 volts and 1.4 volts is where I start. I now want to uh, check the position of the laser spot on the cantilever. We can see that it is positioned very nicely at the tip of the cantilever, right here, passing through the cantilever to hit the uh, surface here. Gives you an idea of the height we are above the surface of the sample. I now want to prepare the GUI for uh, the PNDS for the approach. This is how we're going to make our tip approach here. I, as a matter of caution, always want to set the manual Z motor control to one micron jog size so that if I hit this accidentally, the cantilever is only going to move one micron and I won't jam it through the sample surface and break the cantilever or damage the sample. Now check the GPID, GPID settings is 1, 100, 1,000 for the integral, 100 for the derivative. This is a good fast setting to use to move the um, cantilever up and down and also when we're measuring large measurements um, for piezoelectric butterfly loop. One time I want to go to the sample page, I want to turn on tip approach centering. I want to check that ZHV gain is set to 15. Uh, I generally use an extend delta of 0.4 at this location where the mouse is. And what that does is that tells the control system how far to drive the cantilever down once it's made contact. So here at one point 086 as a set point when I start tip approach it's going to go to make contact and then drive it further until it gets to 1.486 and that's the meaning of extended delta that ensures I have a good solid contact on the surface of the sample and can follow it with the cantilever. Once at this location I can now focus on the sample surface. It's in sharp contrast. The cantilever is out of focus. Maximize my zoom. Slowly move the sample down until the laser spot begins to approach the tip. Notice that the laser is coming in like this, going through the cantilever and hitting the surface. So when the cantilever is close to the surface, this laser spot will be very, very close to it. All I'm going to do is get nearby. I'm not going to try to make contact, and this minimizes the amount of time it takes for tip approach. The cantilever is almost in focus, but it's still above the surface. You can see the shadow of the cantilever right now in the laser spot. I can do my final positioning of the sample. And I'm ready to start my tip approach. Pressing the start button, begin to watch the Z drive move 
in stages attempting to make contact with the sample. When it does, we'll see this go to 1.47, 1.46 as a set point. Now notice how the cantilever went into feedback right at zero. This gives us the maximum range for the sensor to move during our measurements. This was accomplished by having tip approach centering enabled. If you don't have that enabled, then the system will stop wherever it makes first contact, which could be a high or low. But we want maximum range both north and south on the sensor as we make our piezoelectric measurements, so you always want to use centering. If the system drifts out of the center position, you can always recenter. It'll go back and find the center again. We are now in contact with the sample and we're ready to make a measurement. However, there's two things I always want to do before I make a measurement. First, since we're going to make a thin film measurement first on a thin, a clamped capacitor that's only going to move microns, I want to slow down the GPID. This is the feedback speed. I always want the gain to 1 because that affects the signal coming out of the Z error B and C. But I slow down the P, I, and D by getting rid of the zeros. Two each. One, ten, and one. This is very, very slow. It's enough for the chuck to remain in position over the span of seconds, but not enough to follow a fast movement of the cantilever. The next thing I want to do is I want to turn off the camera light. The reason being is that the camera LED power supply actually injects electrical noise into the photosensor and this will minimize the noise, the high frequency electrical noise. We're ready to make a measurement. I can come to vision and first thing I'll do is actually run a hysteresis test to make sure I'm connected to the sample and that it moves. I'm going to set hysteresis 20 volt 1 millisecond as the label, using an internal amplifier, 20 volts, no bias. The sample area for both reference capacitors is 10 to the minus 3 square centimeters. Setting a thickness to 1 micron for both of them. My hysteresis period is 1 millisecond. And the starting condition for auto amp is 0 0.019 on the amp level. I'm going to set auto amp and a preset loop. The last thing I want to set is my sensor. In this case, the uh, force distance curve indicated that the scale factor is 400 angstroms per volt. And notice I have a positive sign because the cantilever and the photosensor spot move uh, together. Second page, I want none. I'm not putting any labels up here. And I can press OK for my measurement. First thing I'm looking for is do I have a electric hysteresis loop, which I do. Notice that the sample has a, an offset to the right. Also notice that I have a rather distorted uh, butterfly loop. And the reason for this is because of air motion uh, thermal changes in the sample, thermal changes in electronics. We're looking at very, very small samples. So I now want to close this. Go to Advanced Piezo, which is further down Quick Look. When I execute Advanced Piezo, I also want to go and give it a name, Advanced P. for the clamped capacitor, 20 volts, 1 millisecond. 
So I want to do the standard bipolar, 20 volts, no bias, 10 to the minus 3 square centimeters, 1 micron thick, 1 millisecond period. I'm going to have the system operate in auto amp, uh, but I'm not going to do the preset enable because it's already preset by the previous hysteresis loop. I'm going to do 20 samples, which I can set the samples with the uh, up and down arrows. I've set my scale as plus 400 angstroms. I want to set the displacement units and go to the second page. Here I can put in my sample name, the type of test, angstroms for label 2, and polarization for uh, label 1. I'm going to plot both. I'm not going to perform any math on the results. And I'm going to only plot the result of the measurement. Now, since I'm doing 20 averages, advanced piezo will save all 20 piezo loops right here and all 20 polarization loops. Once the test is ready to go, we let it start. Notice it's asking to cancel the test on any one of the measurements and it's telling you which loop it's on down at the very bottom of the vision uh, window. You also notice looking at the uh, laser spot that even though the cantilever is moving that you cannot see uh, even the, the speckle from the laser at all because the motion is so small. And there we have it. Here is the polarization loop and the corresponding butterfly loop. Our displacement in this particular situation is on the order of approximately uh, 8 to 9 angstroms. Now, I want to save this particular data. So I will come to the lower part of the screen and say save to new data set because I don't have a data set open and press OK. It will then ask me to create a data set. This is demo AFM reference 12 13 I begin with the file name, the data set name, and my initials. And now I want to know what was the name of this record in the archive. This is Clamped Advanced uh, Piezo, 20 volts, 1 millisecond. So I pretty much described the test, the task that was used, and the capacitor. OK. And using a data set, I now have that measurement forever. I can double click on it. I get the menu, look at the plot. I can change the plot. Uh, I can export the data. I can um, export the plots and put them into Word or Excel or other types of um, uh, application programs. Now that I've completed my uh, tests, I'm going to do two different things. Number one, I'm going to speed up the GPID again because I want to move the tip. And I do this by adding uh, two zeros to the end of each one. and raise the tip. You'll notice once I do tip retract, 
that the set point is slowly going down until it's ready to raise the tip all the way. Once tip retract is complete, I can now turn on the light, look at where the cantilever is. I'm going to raise clockwise the tip slightly to make sure I clear the membrane and you can see the shadow of the tip moving back and forth right here to tell you how high you are. Use my manual adjustments. The membrane. Since I'm going to be doing a large scale measurement here, I'm going to move the sensor connection from Z error to Z drive. I also want to change the scale for my measurements. But before I do this, I'm going to go to the first page and have it do the automated tip approach. But since I'm now going to be measuring large displacements, I want the GPID to be fast and I want the measurement to be slow. So I'm going to leave the GPID set to 100, 1000, and 100 and start my tip approach. I'm going to stop the tip approach before it makes contact because I want to make a slight adjustment to the position of the cantilever laterally, vertically. So I think it's ideally in the center of the membrane. And then start the tip approach again. Notice again that it centered itself automatically. I'm going to leave the GPID fast. I'm not going to change it. I am also going to leave the microscope LED on to ensure that um, you can see the membrane itself moving. Hmm. Can't leave us oscillating. Can you hear it? Is that ringing? Yeah. Yeah. It's that. Oh, there it is again. Yeah. So I just have to lower the the gain here for this. It may not be uh, audible on the video. But with a setting of 100, 1,100, I can hear a slight whine from the piezoelectric uh, chuck, which means that the GPID is very fast and the chuck is starting to oscillate. So to reduce it, I'm going to reduce the proportional gain to a level of 10, 1,100 from 100. I could use higher gain, such as 20 or 30, as long as I'm sure that I'm not oscillating. Um, with the cantilever to the chuck. Once it's positioned, I can now come to vision and pull up the hysteresis loop. Now, again, I'm going to do a 20 volt test, except this is going to be at one second, a period of uh, 1,000 milliseconds. And there'll be one other change. And that change is I'm going to set the sensor to a different value. 
The 400 isn't the proper value because we had to put in the scale factor for the chuck. A minus number, and I already calculated the value for the uh, chuck, but I'm going I'm going to do it again. The scale factor for the chuck will be the ZHV value, which is 15 in this case, times 500 angstroms per volt. So if ZHV is 1, the scale factor, starting scale factor will be 500 angstrom per volt. If the ZHV is 15, then the starting factor will be 7500 angstrom per volt. This membrane moves plus or minus uh, 2 microns or so, or at least plus or minus a micron, which is a very large displacement for the piezoelectric chuck, which can move a, ma a maximum of 7.5 microns. So I'm going to use a ZHV 15. I now have to correct this value by the AFM Zcal value right here, which is 8696. So I'll multiply it by 0.8696, which is the Zcal value for this particular chuck. And I end up with a scale factor of 6,522 angstroms per volt. Come back to the scale factor, and it is a minus 6,522 angstroms per volt for this scale factor. Otherwise, the test is the same as for the thin film. The only difference is being a slow test with a period of one second and a negative scale factor. And I made a very common mistake, which was not to move my connections to the capacitor. So I will get a butterfly loop, but I'll get essentially noise because I was moving the thin film capacitor instead of the membrane capacitor. I take the orange, now connect it to the gray. All right, I now have the drive driving the top electrode, which is the gray connection of the membrane and the return on black, which is the bottom electrode of the membrane. It's the same bottom electrode for both. This time we'll see the membrane move if I repeat the test. Quick look, hysteresis. Okay. Now you can see the membrane moving. You see that we get a very big butterfly loop out of the sample, which in this case is showing minus 15,000 angstroms to minus 30,000 angstroms or more, which is approximately between 1.5 and 2 microns of total motion. I'm going to throw that data away, come back to advanced piezo, make my two changes. It's going to be a piezo period of one second. Change my scale factor to minus 6522. And change my label to membrane. I'm now ready to do my test. But I don't need to average 20 times. In fact, I only need to average, I don't need to average one time, but I'm going to give it an average of four for this measurement. And say, OK, now, even though we really don't need to average for this measurement, it's nice to use advanced piezo because it also will take out any tilt that occurs in the membrane uh, piezoelectric loop during the test and um, apply a smoothing filter to the result as well. If 
final thing that advanced PEs will do will be to zero the butterfly loop so that the first point occurs at zero. I put in hitting the right button button and say I want to have grid lines. I can go to custom dialog, go to the style, displacement measurement, make it larger so it's easier to see, close it, and notice here's the starting point. The crossing point for the butterfly loop wasn't at zero. This is very typical for thin films. And you can change the shape of this loop simply by placing the cantilever at different parts of the membrane. But the total displacement here is from almost um, minus 5,000, it's about minus 4,000 angstroms up to um, 13,000 angstroms, which is uh, 1.7 microns from bottom to top. Again, I want to save this to the open data set because I took it from Quick Look. Say OK. And this is membrane record advanced P 20 volts one second. Final test I'm going to do here is to demonstrate that this is a very accurate test. I want to go back to advanced piezo and do one measurement and make it a 10 thousand millisecond test, which is a 10 second test. Now the advantage of this is that the sample is going to be moving very slowly during the test, which you'll be able to see in the video from the camera. And the cantilever will be able to follow it precisely with no phase delay, showing a very sharp loop. A 10 second test can take from 30 seconds up to a minute and a half. As you can see, Vision's deciding to do three measurements on this membrane. It is a 10-second uh, loop, and when loops are longer than four seconds to five seconds, uh, Vision automatically makes multiple measurements to ensure that it doesn't latch on to the wrong auto amplification stage. So when doing very slow loops like this in auto amplification, it will do more than one loop to verify for sure that it's in the proper auto amplification stage. And we have a result. The membrane has a very nice polarization loop, even at uh, 10 seconds, a very nice butterfly loop and I want to save this again to the data set and simply change it to a 10 second record. I now have completed my data set. I have three measurements. Advanced P, one is a um, thin film moving only about uh, eight or nine angstroms, a membrane 
moving about one and a half microns in one second and the same membrane moving uh, about a little bit more the same distance in 10 seconds. Now that I'm through with the testing, I want to remove the sample from the PNDS. To do this, I first want to do my tip retract, leaving a fast GPID. Now, as you notice, the set point is reducing right here. I do not want to turn off the laser while the PNDS is doing any activity, whether it's a surface scan, uh, tip approach, tip retract, or measurement, because the PNDS will immediately freeze if it loses track of the laser. Now that the uh, cantilever has been, has been uh, raised for tip retract, I'm going to do it a couple more times. In this case, it's 25 microns per um, uh, per retract. Before I do anything, I want to turn off the laser to ensure that I don't get any glint while I'm handling the materials. And then manually, I can raise the stage, turning clockwise to bring the cantilever way up, away from the sample, so when I remove the cantilever, I don't bump it against anything and break it. For its size, it's extremely strong, but compared to the strength of your fingers and the strength of the other items in the light lever, it's very weak. Move the cantilever holder, place it in a place where it's not going to get touched very easily. Move the sample from the chuck, and I'm ready to load another sample and do another measurement. That completes the uh, demonstration of a measurement of a piezoelectric thin film and a piezoelectric NIMS type device using the PNDS. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, contact Radiant Technologies by telephone or by email uh, at radiant at therodevices.com. And we'll be more than glad to answer your questions and help you through your first measurements. Thank you.